here and you know you wake up in the morning you, well you just don't want to wake up you just don't even want to roll out of bed and, and uh you know everything on the radio every song reminds you of your ex uh you go to work and you drive by all the places you used to eat and used to go to and it, it's so tough to uh not do the wrong things because we're so emotional so this is the purpose of, of the video and I, I sure hope it helps you out Oh, please keep in mind that it, technologically wise, uh, you know, I'm just a normal, everyday, average kind of guy. So please uh, forgive me if I make a whole bunch of uh, boo-boos and mistakes here. Uh, very first thing, uh, you may be past this point, but you don't want to panic. It's the very worst thing you can do. Uh, if you've already panicked in that, we're going to talk about that here in a minute. Um, when you completely flip out uh, and have an emotional breakdown it only confirms their decision to break up with you and of course it pushes them farther away if you're being clingy if you're just demanding they spend more time with you you're demanding they 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 talk with you about this it just pushes them farther away now here's some signs of panic uh, if, if you've done this or had this done to you uh, you'll immediately recognize it I call it text message terrorism. And, you know, it's basically just sending a barrage of text messages trying to stay in this person's life uh, and trying to, you know, get back together with them and, you know, just trying to find out what, exactly what happened. And it's one of the first signs uh, that you'll see a lot of time is text messages terrorism, I call it, or the old drunk dialing. Now, you don't necessarily have to be drunk to do what I call drunk dialing. Uh, you can be in a highly emotional state, uh, and this is still, I consider, drunk dialing, but you know what this is, too, if you've done that. It's just calling over and over and over again, especially if you're getting the, the voicemail, uh, and you want to basically professing your undying love uh, or how much you're sorry for what you did. Uh, none of this helps. Arguing about the breakup contacting their friends and family. Now, this is kind of an interesting one. The uh, reason most of us do this is because we don't accept what the ex have told us for the reason that they broke up. Uh, so we may think they have somebody waiting in the wings uh, or there's some other reason other than what they've told us for why they're breaking up. But you still don't want to do it. And accidental meetings. <laughs> These don't really fool your ex, and you know they're not accidental. Um, so another thing you don't want to do. So if you don't want to do all those things, what should you do? And this is really tough because you want to be, it's counterintuitive. What you should do is counterintuitive and opposite of your feelings. Your feelings inside are like, you know, I, I've got to see them. I've got to tell them, you know, what really happened. I've got to tell them how I really feel. And that's exactly opposite of what you should do. So here's the big secret. For right now, you want to agree with the breakup. That's right, you just calm, you're cool, and you agree with the breakup. Again, that's calm, and you're cool and okay with it. Now, you may already be past this point, but like I said, you might have already kind of freaked out a little bit. You know, don't feel bad, that, that happens. Uh, but if you run into them again, or see their friends or family, you now want to be calm, cool, and okay with the breakup. And the big thing is you'll be way ahead of the game if you just don't do all that crazy stuff. We're talking about the, the text message terrorism, the drunk dialing, and, and, getting, and trying to, to see all their family and friends in that. Now, why does this work? Well, it works for a lot of very powerful psychological reasons. But I'm just going to talk about a couple. And I can't remember if it was my father or my grandfather that, introduced me to this phrase but it's so true though through life it's the hungry dog doesn't get fed if you just imagine for a moment you know you hear some scratching on your front door and you open the door and it's some mangy dog with his ribs sticking out and you know he's you know you can tell he's starving to death but your first instinct is to get him out you know to get him away from your doorstep 
Now, if you open that door and, you know, it's a well-groomed uh, dog, you tell he's fed, he's got a collar, you know he belongs to somebody, and you treat that dog a lot better uh, than you treat the dog that's, uh, you know, kind of hung, showed up on your doorstep hungry, if you will. Now, their main psychological reason, and please burn this into your head or memory, write it down, is people want what they can't have. This is so true. Uh, whether it's the jobs, uh, you know, when is it hardest to get a job? When you don't have a job. It's easy to get a job when you already have one. The same is true with money and credit. They loan money to people that don't need the money all the time. When you have no credit, it's almost impossible to get any credit. And the same things hold true with, with love and attention. So, if you've blown it, <laughs> you know, it's okay. Uh, is there still a chance? You betcha. And here's what you want to do. You just want to write a short note and include these things. Don't add to it and don't take away from it. But you want to let them know you're okay with the breakup now. You tell him or her that you agree with the decision to break up. If you did something bad, like have an affair, just briefly apologize. If you didn't do anything bad, don't find something to apologize about. That'll be help. That will be worse. Uh, but if you did something bad, just briefly apologize. Then tell them something really exciting has happened in your life, and you need to tell them about it sometime. Let them know that you want to give them some time to themselves for now, and then close by saying, maybe at some point we can be friends. And remember, you want to be calm and you want to be have it have a cool tone. Uh, if you'd like a little example of this letter, just hang out for a second, and I'll give you a little uh, example that, where you can get a little example. Uh, but this sets the stage for your next moves. Now, if you'd like to learn more. Uh, I really, really debated over this because for a couple reasons. Uh, these are very controversial tactics, and I, you know some have called these mind control. And I've <laughs> and not very often because I'm usually helping people that want to get back with their with their exes. But it makes me very, very leery. And I thought for a long time before I actually released some of this information because I don't know who is you know exactly is going to be getting this. Uh, I'm assuming that you're an average, uh, well-meaning individual and that you're trying to get back with your ex, uh, with good intentions. So, uh, I just want to say that this is not for stalkers. It's not to be used for, you know, any kind of revenge. Uh, don't try to get back together with them and just to break up with them or break their hearts. And I'm just going to throw a blanket out there. It's not for cuckoos, crazies, or weirdos. This is for just normal, loving people that, you know, have made some type of, of mistake in their relationships and want to, want the best advantage of, of putting this back together and stopping their breakup and, and repairing their relationship.